welcome to episode 21 of Very Fun Adventures. My name is Tanya and I'm coming to you from Rochester, Minnesota, where my family and I own Firefly Berries, which is a fruit farm specializing in strawberries, Concord grapes, and naturally dyed yarns. Well, hello, welcome. Welcome back if you are a regular visitor to this channel and welcome if you are new to this podcast and our channel. Thanks for checking us out. So it has been a hot minute since I have last recorded. Um, that's lots of reasons I, I was really striving to do every two weeks, but alas, life hit and we got sick in our house, not COVID, but a really nasty spring cold that knocked me out for like five days and then it hit a couple of my kids. Um, then we had a dance production and you know, life, life after COVID is, I mean, I'm glad things are returning. I don't know if we could say it's fully after COVID because we're still seeing numbers, but with the lessening of restrictions and things, um, I like that some of the things are coming back, but part of me also kind of liked, I'm kind of a homebody. So I kind of liked having the time to be at home and not have to run everywhere. Anyway. All that said, it's been about a month since I've come to you last. Um, in between the sickness, there was also some lack of knitting mojo, lack of inspiration. And uh, yeah, so I actually, though I have knit quite a bit, I, um, I got my inspiration back in the weirdest of ways, which my husband will, will tell you, he thinks it's bizarre, but those of you who speak my language will not think it's bizarre. I got it back by decluttering and reorganizing so that my space was open and could breathe more and I could create more. I don't know. I feel so much more creative when there is less stuff around. So that's what I did. Anyway, let's let's get to the the nitty gritty because I know you're here for the knitting. And let's start with what I'm wearing because I'm kind of getting hot. It's, it's, uh, let's see, what's the date today? April 25th, maybe something like that, that I'm recording. And so it's not warm out by any means here in Minnesota, but it is warmer. And I don't feel like I need so many layers inside. So I'm wearing a shawl that I have not worn. Well, I have worn it for a little bit, but I started wearing it since I saw you last. I knit it quite a while ago. It is called the Spring Thing, and it is by Espace Trico. Um, it is a one skein shawl with a mini skein, a 20 gram mini skein to go with it. It's fingering weight, um, which is really great if you like to purchase those beautiful one skeins uh, that just kind of call to you. And it's very simple. It's garter stitch. so. I didn't like it at first when I finished it, and I don't know why I didn't like it. Um, it's a little different shape, and maybe I was sick of the color. You know, sometimes when you're knitting, you get sick of the color at the end. Um, but I really have been wearing it quite a bit in the last couple weeks and have been enjoying it. So let me take it off and I can show you. It is a very, it's garter stitch. So you start on one end and it increases kind of to a peak, and then it gets real skinny again at the other end. So it's it's quite long. I mean like I'm I'm five eight and you can't I it's longer than my wingspan. Um so once you finish the knitting, the garter stitch it's all garter. It's very very simple. This is an under the sea colorway, uh very fun yarns, very tough sparkle base. And then the mini that I used actually isn't a mini at all, but it was leftover um, Lavender Loon Yarn Co. I had knit my puntilla in this colorway and I had some leftover purple and I thought it accented the purple really well. So, so yeah, so that is the spring thing. So that's a great, if you have that one skein or you really are excited to buy one skein, you just need a solid to go with it for the edging. It's a really great use for it. And it, it wraps around kind of three times. And I think maybe that might have been why I didn't love it at first. It was kind of an odd kind of wrap. But it's it's hard sometimes when you knit with one skein to have it long enough to really feel like it keeps you warm. Um, you'll know what I'm talking about in a little bit when I show you 
a different shawl that I finished. Um, but this one, because of the way it's knit, it's it kind of wraps around more like a scarf, and um, it it does keep you warm without feeling really heavy. Sometimes when I knit shawls that have two or three skeins of yarn in them, they just feel really heavy on my neck and not quite, quite as comfortable to wear. So anyway, I'm gonna leave that off because I'm getting kind of warm. Oh, and the sweater is my very old Puntia, not Puntia, also, Puntia is also by Hohi Locatelli. This is the Manzanilla. Um, it's got, it's a worsted, well, I knit it in worsted weight, a light worsted weight Cascades 220, I think, superwash. It's very old, but it's um, got some garter bumps. I don't know if you can see that in there. You have some stocking knit and then some garter. And then it has this really pretty cable up the sleeve. Um, I've got the patches and I noticed actually, so by the time I look, wah, wah, got another hole in my um, my by my wrist. The tricky bit with this one is that because when you knit it construction wise you knit the um, cable all by itself and then you pick up stitches and you actually knit this way for the sleeves instead of around. Um, it's kind of tricky like I can't just rip back and fix that there because that's in the um, going back and forth the other direction. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is knit a patch again like I did on my elbows and I'm gonna have to put that over the top of it. But I have not, it's it's one of my warmest sweaters that I have so I've kind of been waiting for spring to come and then I will repair it after I um, after I wash it and get it ready for the, for the off season. Okay, so that is what I'm wearing. What I have finished, I have actually finished four things, one of which that I started and finished since I came to you last. But let's start with the one that you have would have seen me working on last time, would be my Leia sweater. Um, this is a pattern by Isabel Kramer, and I knitted, I think it's fingering weight, but I knitted out of Berry Tough Sport in the Dusty Rose colorway with just a little bit of um, extra detail coloring on the cuff, not the cuff, the neckline, and then at the bottom. Um, and that was, I think, like Frabu Fibers Sport DK something. It's on my project page, which is linked below. But it turned out really well. Um, I'll see if I can find a picture of me wearing it with um, the dress that I had, I had made to wear with it, I had gotten. But uh, it's a crop. I made it cropped to go over my dress, my spring dress, and um, has this beautiful lace work at the neckline. And then it's pretty much just um, straight knitting down the rest with some one by one ribbing at the cuffs and at the bottom. I feel like it took me a really long time to knit this, and I think it was because I was alternating skeins. Let's see if you can look really close. If you can see, it's kind of hard to see, um, but maybe you can see that I had two different skeins and one was just a tad bit moodier or darker than the other. And so um, if I would have knit all that and then all the other one, it would have been a definite color blocking look, which I didn't want to do. So um, knitting, knitting in the round and the small circumference you need to do for the sleeves and still doing helical knitting was not giving me joy and that's what took me so long on that one. So that's the Leia. The third project I finished, these look kind of funky. I've got hair all over thing, everything. I feel like I'm shedding. These look really kind of tiny and they look like they're kind of big here but I think it's just because of the ribbing goes in so much on the cuff. But these are just some shorties, my own pattern I just did. Um, two by two ribbing for the cuff for maybe like 10 to 15 rounds. I think I did about an inch and a half. I went more by by inch. And that, the peach one is, I just did the cuff and then the heel and the gusset in, uh, heel and the heel, the, the heel flap and the heel turn in the peach, which was uh, one twisted tree who is no longer dying. And then the striping is from Stranded Dye Works, 
and it is Don't Touch Your Face, the co that colorway is. So I made these, they turned out nice. These are for my mom for Mother's Day. I do not think she watches this, so I don't think she'll see it. Um, but yeah, and I have a lot, quite a bit of yarn left over. So I'm hoping to make myself a pair of regular full socks out of this um, Stranded Dye Works color because it is a BFL base, which I really love. I think it's 80% Blue Face Lester and 20% Nylon, but it just, it's soft enough and it wears really well. It hardly pills at all, which is fabulous. So yeah, so those are some shorty socks. Oh, the other two things that I finished are on behind me on Betty Lou, my very helpful, uh, I always call her a mannequin, but she's not really a mannequin. She's like a dress form. Um, anyway, she actually, there's two shells on here. You would never guess because, I mean, you could guess. They, they look very similar. They could be layered together, but this one is called Midnight in Sydney. And it's also a one skein shawl project. And I knit this, it's very lacy and drapey. Let me hold it up so you can get the full gist of it. If you can't tell, I have been in a pink mood lately. But so this is quite long. I would say it's it's not quite my wingspan, but it's, it's pretty long. Um, and it is a simple, what do you call these? I'm forgetting crescent shaped shawl where you cast on with the tab cast on at the top the pattern is free it's on Ravelry and it is by um, let's see right down Meg Gadsby so you start up here and then it's all garter and then at the ending you do the lace edges the lace the lace work and the pico bind off and my pico bind off is looking a fabulous today because when I blocked it, I pinned every single little pico that there was. Um, and it smells really good too because I used um, lavender eucalyn wool wash. Ooh, it can make me itchy. So this base is my new base, uh, one of my newer bases. It is a very luxurious fingering weight. Um, I call it angel fingering and it is I might get this wrong. If I get this wrong, I'll put it on the screen in its correct form. But I believe it is 60% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 20% cashmere. I may have that wrong. The percentages may be a little different, but the um, content is not different. It is definitely a baby alpaca, silk cashmere blend. So as you can imagine, it's very drapey. Uh, in fact, when I am kind of slippery from the silk in it, and when I first started, I, I, this was the pattern I picked out to knit. A, this is a sample for my, my booth. Um, oh, and it's in dusty rose in case you were the same color as this one. Um, in case you're wondering, but I, I had a hard time. I'm a very loose knitter. Generally, when I see a pattern, I have to go down two needle sizes. So if it says, I can't remember what this one said. I think it might have said a five or a six on fingering. I went down to three, but I was struggling because I generally don't like super drapey garments. I mean, this turned out fine, but generally I like them a little bit I don't know, a little bit tighter, I guess. I don't know. I feel like if I knit something, I want it to be dense enough to be warm and not just decoration because I want it to keep me warm. But because this has alpaca and cashmere in it, it is warm all by itself. But so let me put it on. You can kind of see. Um, it, this one is more of a decorative kind of shawl because it is so drapey, but it's actually quite, quite pretty how it drapes with the, um, the lace edging on it. So... Yeah, but so I was starting to say, I'm a rambler today, please forgive the ramblings. I'm a little out of practice, but I struggled because I kept feeling like, oh, this is really loose and it's kind of slippery. Um, I definitely would recommend that you use um, wooden needles of some sort 
or maybe carbon, something that's a little more grippy than stainless steel, because with the slippery um, content of the yarn and the very soft feel of it, it just was really, especially in the beginning when you don't have very many stitches on your needles. Um, I actually used um, double points. I had long double points for a while that I used two of until it got farther along. You could use also straights for a while until it got long enough that I needed to put it on my circular needle to hold the extra stitches. But that is the Midnight in Sydney shawl by Meg Gadsby. And last, but certainly not least, is the Zorzel shawl by Lisa Haynes. And I have been working on this for a while. I did not put the tassels on yet. I haven't quite decided. Uh, I'll put a picture in and you can see the tassels on it. I haven't decided if I want the tassels or not. So this too, this is a two skein shawl and it used most of two skeins. Um, I did this in, so it's quite large. You see it's got different short rows. It's got a stripy section. Again, this is also a crescent shawl. Um, starts at the beginning with the tab cast on. This one is paid for, so I'm not going to give you all the details. But you can see it has a short row section here, and then you switch colors and do the other short row section with the other color, and then you end with stripes. And it is not supposed to have any sort of fancy cast off, but when I blocked it, I was, I need to get some of those wires um, versus just pins, because when I block shawls like this, um, I have not, you know, you end up inevitably getting little, it doesn't flow the same. So if you have any recommendations for great uh, blocking wires, go ahead and leave those below because I'd love to know about those. Um, yeah, so it turned out good. The only thing is um, the light pink is Molly Girl Yarns in Beauty School Dropout. And the kind of, I don't know what you call that purpley pink is a linen a linen merino blend and it is like well done it's by knit crate also in my project page and they're both fingering weight um, the light pink is like 463 to 100 grams 463 yards and the other color here is like 400 yards so I didn't really think it would be, I thought it'd be fine, right? You know, it's just slightly different. But in in actuality, the I thought maybe this part would be a little bit looser gauge because it is a tad bit thinner. But this is a merino nylon. I think it's like a 75-25 blend. And this one with the linen made it so much drapier that this actually ended up having a little bit different gauge than this. And I can tell because, you know, I'm kind of particularly that way, but as when you hold it like this, you can kind of see that the, I don't know, I feel like you can kind of see the ripples on this side over here, how it, it doesn't quite lay right. Um, so lesson learned for me. I have never knit with linen before or a linen blend before, and I really love how it feels, but it definitely drapes different than like a 75-25 or an 80-20. So next time, if I were to make this again, I would not mix this blend with the 7520. I would do something uh, similar to the 7520. So not having the linen in. All that said, it is a beautiful yarn, this linen blend yarn that I used. And um, I do have a whole skein left. So I'm thinking I might make like a summer I don't know, one of those like bralettes or camisole sort of things because I think it would be really nice um, and drapey and comfy. So yeah, so that's the Zorzel by Lisa Haynes. I'm going to redress my mannequin here real quick so you don't have this big bright white thing coming out. Okay, let's see here. All right, that's not perfect, but we will make it work. 
Okay, so those were all of my finished objects. Uh, so works in progress. I mentioned earlier that I have not had a ton of mojo until like the last week, I would say. Like since I'd come to you last, the first week I was still good. The middle two weeks, which is when I got sick and my family got sick and we had stuff going on, I was not, I was feeling kind of meh because the, I call it the Minnesota brown winter, the winter of 21, 22 is what I call Minnesota brown winter around here because we have not gotten hardly any snow and it's just been brown and depressing and cloudy and cold. And I say that even having been gone for a couple weeks to somewhere sunshiny. Uh, so it was just, I wasn't feeling it. But now the last week, since I started decluttering a little bit, and like, I'm a paper piler, so I, I like to pile papers around the house. And, and then I have, you know, paper piles everywhere, which is, can be really overwhelming because then you have to sit down and go through them. So anyway, I reorganized some things. And the last week I have been kind of in a finishing, finishing place. So I, I haven't really had the inspiration to cast on things yet. I know that a cast on party is coming. I'm gonna feel the need to cast on things, but generally speaking, the things that I have picked up to knit have been works in progress that I've already had on my needles. So let's take a look at some of those things that I have. Oops. Sorry, Betty Lou, I'm poking you there with my chair. The first thing that I worked on, or the thing that I've been working on the most in the recent days, is my scrappy socks, stripy socks. Now, if you remember, these are my scrappy rainbow socks. I knit a pair of these. This is my sock. This is where I was last time. I knit a pair of socks, um, the heel toe do -si do socks with this colorway. This rainbow colorway is by, um, Show Me Yarn, took me a second. I think it's called like the Bell Star or something like that. And I loved it so much that I decided to make another pair for myself. Well, in my past thinking, I, I wound up, that was really good, I, I divided the yarn I had left and I wound it into two balls about this size. I picked out a coordinating, this was supposed to be the heel and this was going to be the cuff. And in my head when I started the cuff, I was making shorties. You see this? This is not a shorty sock. I got like right here and I was, I, I was looking at my little ball of yarn and I'm like, wait a minute, these aren't shorty socks. I said I was gonna knit shorty socks. I'm gonna run out of yarn. So I, I stopped as quickly as I could my, my uh, lighting is weird there. Sorry about that. I stopped as quickly as I realized and I started the heel, but it was really too late. And I was, I'm too lazy. I, I'm not a, this is perfectly fine. I'm not going to rip it out and nobody is really going to see my foot. So anyway, I got to here, which I still have. I have big feet. I have a size 10 and a half to 11 women's foot, U.S. size. Um, so I still have a fair bit to go, but what I did is, you can't even really tell, I pulled out this, this color is very similar to here. It is, I used to be in the um, Row One Yarn Club, I had to think for a second, and so I have a lot of these little 10 gram minis, so I thought, well, I'm just gonna grab two more that are kind of similar, and then we're just gonna kinda, I'm gonna knit until I get to the toe, with one one of them and then I'm going to switch and do the toe on that one and then on the other sock when I run out I'll do the opposite I'll knit the toe one that I used for the first sock in the larger section on the foot and then I'll knit the foot one from the first one as the toe if you get what I'm trying to say there um, so this is the blue at the end that I added is the red pansy it's in the color Odette and then to go with that on the other one from Porter Wilco, I picked out Voyager. So if you look at these, they're very similar. So I'm gonna knit this one until I get to the toe and then I'll do this in the toe. Then in the second one, I'll knit the foot in this one and the toe in this one. So one is just a little bit brighter than the other, but it'll be fine and I'll have a nice pair of socks. They'll just be a little more scrappy than I've 
than I expected. Oh, and it appears I'm missing one of my needles. They must be over on my bench yet, but these are, I actually really, I'm usually a bamboo wooden needle person all the way, but I really like these. They give me a little bit more grip than the stainless steel, and these are the carbons. K-A-R-B-O-N-Z, carbons needles, and they're double points, and I use a US zero. So I actually have on my list to get myself some more of these because I really do like them. For Particularly for knitting socks, I like them. Okay, so that's whip number one. Whip number two, oh, this is a cast on. So this is a cast on since I saw you last. I'm trying to do a few samples for the upcoming season. This is the, I think it's called Spring To It Cowl. And it is a free pattern on Ravelry. You can kind of see it there. It's two colors. And it is by Kristen Finley. And I'm not sure if I'm going to take this out or not. I, I started it and I'm sort of like, maybe yes, no. So I sell very fun yarns at the farmer's market locally in town. And a lot of times, a lot of the knitters I see there, they like one or two skein projects. They want, they want something particular. They, they like it when I have it samples to show them exactly what to do with the yarn. So hence the reason I made the Midnight in Sydney shawl with one skein of yarn. And this one is two skeins. Um, although I don't know that I use both full skeins, but this is in my yak sock. So you can see I've started, I've done the ribbing, uh, and it is yak sock. This one is the overall, so it's an indigo dyed yarn. And then the gray is just the natural birthday suit base. That's what I call it, birthday suit. So I'm up to the first section of lace. And you know, this shawl actually, or not shawl, I said that wrong, cowl. It actually was, I was enjoying it. I don't know, it's a little, I think I stopped because it was a little fiddly when I was watching TV for the lace section, I had to concentrate a little bit more. And I think my brain just wasn't having it. When I feel overwhelmed or not really into knitting very much, if I am gonna knit, it's gonna be straight stockinette or um, garter stitch. So, yeah. I think, so the reason I might knit it, take it all out is because I was thinking it wasn't contrasty enough. What do you guys think? Give me your opinion. It's a piece of red on there. Um, so I, ha I have two opinions when it comes to color work projects. Uh, one is that, you know, you want to, you want it to be different enough that you can see it differently. You know, you can, that you can see your work matters, right? Which I think this does, you know, obviously you can see the blue and the gray. It doesn't blend so much together that you can't see it. But then I think there's another school of thought that you want it to be really contrasty so that it really pops. So that would be the only reason why I am considering taking it out. However, I don't think, I don't know about you, but when I am knitting things, it really depends on who's going to wear it. Now I don't have a plan for who's gonna wear this one because it is a sample and maybe it'll stay a sample for a while and sometimes I end up selling my samples at the market. But it's very neutral, which I think is an excellent thing for people, especially if, you know, they don't want to make a big splash of color. They want it to be warm and subtly colored, you know. So I think, I think as I'm talking to you right now, I am talking myself into not ripping this out and just continuing. Um, yeah. So, oh, one other thought is that this is actually the first time I have made anything out of my yak sock base, which is fairly new to my shop. I think I've carried it. I started carrying it partway through the season last last year. And when I say season, my season is sort of like, you know, it starts in like May because that's when I start to set up at the farmer's market um, in town here. And it is it is really soft and a lot more drapey than I thought it would be. Um, and the content is 60% uh, yak, 20% nylon, 20%, wait, no, I said that backwards, 60% merino, 20% yak, 20% nylon, I think. Again, my blends, 
Ooh, they're not all in there. Um, I'll write it on the screen if it is different, but I'm pretty sure it's a 60-20-20. So yeah, I'm pleasantly, I'm happy with this. I, I don't know that I'd say I'm surprised because it is a beautiful yarn. I knew it was a beautiful yarn. It just feels a little differently than I thought I would. And I am knitting it on a US 2, I think. In my, Yeah, I'm actually knitting it on a US 2 needle, which is kind of... Typically, I would knit this on like a US 3, but it was a little bit drapier. And when I knit in the round, I tend to knit a little looser. So, yeah, that's the Spring To It Cowl by Kristen Finley. I think that will turn out nice. I'm actually, as I'm chatting about it, it's getting me excited to knit on it again. And then the last two things I've been working on are scrappy projects. I started the Jelly Roll Blanket last June, so not quite a year ago, and I hadn't knit on it for a while, but I was, every once in a while, I just, I think it's the beautiful colors. They just sort of speak to me, and I like how they change. And this is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And I am, whew, I'm making it a fingering weight yarn, mostly like leftover sock yarn. And I'm doing it, this is gonna be for me, so I'm making it like all kind of lighter pastel colors. So you can kind of see here. A more of a feminine kind of blanket. So you knit them in strips. So this was the first strip and then you, um, you pick up along the edge, this is a paid for pattern, but you pick up along the edge here and then it has on the back, or actually it might not be the front, you have kind of this pretty seam. But yeah, so anyway, I'm really close to finishing my third stripe here. Uh, I think I was, my plan for this is that it was going to be kind of a lap blanket for myself. And so it's about, I'd say about five feet across. Um, so big enough for me to to keep warm, maybe to, you know, maybe share it with my husband if he sits really close to me. Um, but yeah, and I am knitting it actually. It only has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 12, 14. It only has about 20. I don't remember exactly. I'm not going to tell you the exact number because it is paid for, but it has like 15 to 20 stitches in each strip. And so I have these, because I am a, size zero wooden double point sock knitter, sock needle knitter, um, say that 20 times fast. I often break my sock needles and I'm left with like just a couple. So they come in like sets of four or five, five or six, I said that wrong. So these are my Licky, Licka, L-Y-K-K-E -K -K -E needles. They're made of driftwood, size zero, and these do not last very long. Um, they snapped pretty quickly. But I have two left, and so it's perfect because it's, you know, it's just the right size for knitting this blanket. So, yeah. I was knitting them on some really long straight carbons before this pattern, and it was not, it was irritating me because they were too long. So I just switched, and it was a lot more fun then. So that, isn't that the truth, though? You know, like, people, people who are not knitters who are, or maybe even new knitters, non-capital K knitters, they don't quite understand yet the importance of good needles. Because if you're knitting with something where the needle, the, the cord is funky or the needle is too long, it's so much less enjoyable. So my, my advice there is to buy the best needles and uh, supplies, I'm forgetting, needles and other like equipment, I think is the word I was looking for, but buy the best ones that you can afford because they really, they really do make a difference. Okay, last one. I'm kind of, this one's going to be kind of a long episode, so I apologize. I'll try to not chat. I'm kind of chatty and then I haven't been with you for a while, so I have lots of things to show you. So this is my Granny Stripes blanket, which is a crochet project. The pattern is by Lucy of Attic 24. I don't know if I even put a marker where I was. Nope, I didn't. So I don't know where I was exactly last time, but I have done a couple more rows. 
Let's see. So this one too is kind of pastel -y. And this one, I was not planning on making as big as it is, but I think it's gonna be like queen size when I'm done. So this is going to be a long-term project. Oh, apologize for my squeaky chair. Yeah, so I've been working on that and I, I've been crocheting that on my Clover ergonomically correct hook. It's a C 2.75. And that is in my yoga project bag, which I love. That's by Fancy Boy Designs, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's all good. I love that one. This bag, I forgot to tell you, it was by Whimsy Stitches. It's my, my cat yarn bag. Yeah, so I think that is all of my whips and finished projects. I do have plans to cast on a sweater but I barely started that, so I'll talk more about that next time when I come to you. Before I leave, I just wanna chat a little bit more about what I've been doing in the dye pots. So we have some exciting new things that have come to the Berry Fun Yarns online store, which is through our Firefly Berries website, fireflyberries.com, and then you just click under the shop yarn link. And I came out with a new collection, See, I have it sitting back here. I grab all my yarn. Do, 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 do. So I came out with a 10 mini skein set, which you can see here, called the Power of a Woman set. So these are each 20 grams. And I wanted to make, like I said, I was in a paint place. My um, my Aunt Sandy has been so strong and courageous through her fight with uh, breast cancer. So I kind of wanted to, uh, she inspired me to do some pink things and I wanted to honor her and I wanted to honor just women who are awesome because I think every once in a while we need to honor that. So anyway, and I do recognize that pink is not just for women but traditionally it is the color that was associated with the feminine quality. And I chose the, the pink theme because I was going with the breast cancer kind of awareness idea where the pink ribbon and such like that. So anyway, these are the 10 colors. Let's see if I can, I can take them out and show you one by one. Um, but the first color, this one, is oh, it's been a little bit since I looked at it. Oh, this one is called Wicked Awesome. So these kits are available in my shop on both uh, Sparkle, Berry Tough Sparkle, which is a fingering weight, and also Berry Tough Sock. Berry Tough Sock is like 80-20 merino nylon, and the Sparkle is 75-20, um, and then a 5% Sparkle. So yeah, so this is called Wicked Awesome. Let's see what else we got in here. This one is called Kiss This. Slightly different. This one has the darker tones and this one has a little bit of brown in it. Then we have um, Pucker Up. Let me find that one. That is a, a nice bright pink. Pucker Up. This one's called Strength, and it is kind of, it is blowing out, it is hard to see. I'm gonna put um, pictures in that are better for you all to see, but this one is, it's got some peaches in, some whites, some darker. Yeah, and then let's see what we got here. This one. This one's called Beautiful and Fierce, and this one is really hard to photograph. It has very pale peachy pink colors that comes from Red Cape Racho, and then it has some brighter pink that comes from Coach Neal. Oh boy, that's, there we go. Getting there. Number five is Courage, I believe, yeah, Courage. This one is definitely has more oranges in it. 
This one is a lighter one. You know, when I make these, as with any hand dyed yarn, I make them in a big pan and I, I have all the minis lined up and I try to evenly distribute the color, but sometimes an area or a pan just takes the color stronger than others. So this one is a lighter of the orange, but it's more orange and pink. This one is my favorite. This one's called Women Belong Everywhere. And this one is, ba -dum -bum -bum. this one's called Hope. And this one has very subtle browns in it, again. The differences, there are differences in each of these colors. It's very hard to see on camera because they are, um, they make a really great fade from one to the other. But once you knit them, you can see the colors a little more. So you can kind of see this one has these little, these brown little bits in it that almost came out like greenish looking, which I thought was really cool. And let's see, I have two more colors that I have not. This one is called Tiny But Tough, and this is sort of like a classic pink ballerina color. Whoop, as I'm throwing things. And the last one is Chocolate is a Girl's Best Friend. I think that's what it's called, yep. Yeah. So it has more of like a chocolatey brown background and then some pink splashes in it. Yeah, so that's that. Here's a few colors I brought on bigger skeins. So in the shop, like I was saying, there there are mini skein sets, but if you'd rather have something with a larger quantity, I do have each of the colors on multiple bases. So just click on the base that you would like to have it in and see it if it's in there. And if it's not, if it says that I don't have it, please send me a message, please contact me because all of these colorways I did write down, they're all repeatable. Um, right now I have enough dye stuff available to make them all. Um, they're mostly made with dye stuff that I purchase and I don't grow, so they're still naturally dyed, but for instance, they're made from barks of trees that I get in the bark and then I make my, my extract or my dye from it. So I can repeat the colors, a couple of them my dyes have been discontinued, but um, right now I still have plenty of supply. So if you are interested in something that you don't see in a colorway, in a base that you don't see that's not there or a quantity that's not there, like say you wanna make a sweater or something, please send me a note and I would be more than happy to do a custom dye for you and just send you an invoice via PayPal. So this is Women Belong Everywhere on very tough sock in a folk skein. This one I pulled because I'm going to make a hat out of it. It is on this beautiful BFL Aaron weight that I got um, recently. This is very new to the shop. I just, I carried a few skeins of it as I was experimenting with it at the end of last year, so in the fall but I haven't really, this is one of the first ones that I've actually done like a variegated color with it. And it is really blowing out on the screen, isn't it? Kind of see it there. But I love that color. Um, I do also have some on um, some of the fuzzier bases. So I have some on mohair silk and I'm also carrying a Surrey alpaca now. So this is Kiss This on fingering and then the mohair silk. I thought it turned out really beautiful on mohair silk. You never know, mohair silk usually has a really bright, it generally is really bright, but every once in a while, it it definitely, it's harder to do speckles because of the texture, and it, it mutes the speckles. It's more of a blended color, but yeah, it turned out really pretty. So that's Kiss This, and then this one is, I think this is tiny, but yeah, tiny but tough, the kind of ballerina pink. So this tiny but tough is very similar if you were going to like do a fade or something. It's very similar to Dusty Rose. It's just a tad bit lighter. So let me see if I can. So they would go together pretty well, I think. Kind of see they're just a tad bit lighter. Maybe you can see it better with my sweater here. Yeah. So 
Yeah, so lots of beautiful yarn. Oh, and there's one more thing. I also started carrying embroidery thread. Um, and the thread, originally, I, I do not do a ton of, of visible mending. Um, like on high, I do some, like on my jeans and stuff. But I don't do a ton of it. So I'm not super familiar with it. So I did enlist the expertise of a friend, a fellow knitter, who also does a lot of visible mending um, on her opinion on this embroidery thread, if it was appropriate for visible mending. So this is a thread that is silk and blue, blue face lester. So it is a very tough, it should be very tough, durable um, blend. However, it is not spun super tightly. And I would, because of the silk in it, I would recommend hand washing. So it would, after her experience with it, and um, just knowing what I do about the content of it, I would recommend this be for visible, you could still do visible mending with it, but you would be like a hand wash, more of a delicate sort of project. Or also um, would be even better for is just any kind of decorative artwork that you might do, um, just embroidery on things that you would add to the decor of your home, pillows, that sort of thing. But here's a few of the colors that I've dyed so far. This far one is called 1970s Bathroom. And then we have um, overalls, I think, or Mama's Boys. Uh, green is called Mint Tea. This one is part of the um, Power of a Woman, Courage. And then the yellow one is Butter. So there's a few um, there that I'm selling so far. And yeah, so those are kind of uh, fun if you're into other crafts and you want to want to try that out. Or also even like if you're making a hat or something and you want to do a little embroidery on top of your knitted hat. I know that embroidery on knitted items is becoming kind of a thing now. A lot of, a lot of uh, makers are starting to do that. So that was sort of my uh, quick, maybe not so quick, explanation and introduction of the new Power of a Woman collection. I will be having new colors coming out soon, hopefully, um, as the months go by, once I can get outside again and go into the indigo dye pot. Speaking of which, uh, my I will be doing a holiday countdown kit this year. Actually, I'm going to be doing two options. There will be a mini skein option, which will have 24 20 gram mini skeins and I believe I'm going to do them on sparkle this year and those will also come with a full skein on day 25 and they will include four goodies throughout the countdown as well and the theme this year is don't be blue and it's I'm calling it a winter cozy countdown kit because you can use it for whatever you know, I set it up with the 24 or 25 countdown days, but you can count down to whatever it is you celebrate. If it's Christmas, then it's perfect for you to start on day December 1st, but if it's another holiday, just start, count back and start however you'd like to do it. But it is called Don't Be Blue because all of the skeins will use indigo in the colors. So I am envisioning a very moody kind of color scheme, blues and purples and greens and maybe some deep deep reds kind of so that's sort of what I'm thinking I, I'm kind of leaving it open because if I get too narrow it, it kind of stresses me out but that's the general gist of it it's going to include all indigo and I am hoping also for the special goodies to include they, they will they will stick with the don't be blue theme or the winter cozy theme Okay, so that's sort of the idea there. So there will be, that'll be an option. And the second option will be a sock set countdown, which will be, you could either open one a day, four days prior to whatever you're celebrating, or you could do one a week. But it will be a 100 gram, 80% merino, 20 gram mini skein, fingering sock weight base. So in my very tough sock base. And it will 
it would be a full 100 gram plus a 20 gram mini. And there will be four of them that will come in the kit and you can open them one at a time, you can open them all at once. Those also will be the same, don't be blue. They will be a indigo, uh, used in them, indigo color, indigo dye of some sort within the skein and they will be different than the 24 mini skeins. So if you really like the idea of both, you can buy both and they will be different. I have decided that I'm not, I might throw in some really small goodies in the sock set, but for the most part, there won't be goodies like there is in the countdown kit. It will just be the sock sets. So if there's something in there, it'll be very small, so. Okay, oops, I'm clapping for myself here. Um, oh, and those will go live for pre-order in the online store starting April 30th, so soon. Today, like I said, I think is April 25th or 26th, and I will get this video up as soon as I can, get it edited and out so that you can see what it looks, you know, what understand my explanation. If you are on my mailing list, um, I will be sending out a email this week explaining all the things I just said. And if you are not on the mailing list and you would like to be, um, I will put a link below to where you can sign up online so that you can be added to the mailing list. I only send out newsletters maybe like once every four to six weeks about. Depends kind of what's going on, if I have a sale or something new, but generally every four to six weeks. So I think that's it. I think I've talked for long enough now. It says 53 minutes. Hopefully I can edit that down a little bit. But until next time, thank you so much for coming back and checking out what I've been working on and thank you for your patience as I've been away. Now it's starting gonna start to get busy here on the farm. So I'm hoping two weeks from now I'll still be able to sit down, but I'm trying to put it in my schedule to be kind of the same day every two weeks so that I don't miss again. But sometimes, you know, if you're just not feeling it, I, you know, you're not feeling it. So if you're not feeling knitting right now or making, don't force yourself to do it, it'll come back. Anyway, with those words of wisdom, I'm gonna sign off and I will see you all next time. And until then, have a great spring wherever you are and I hope you're getting some warmth and enjoying your, your making, whatever it is you're doing. Thanks so much, bye everyone. Thank you.